Greetings friends, Valerie Ling here. How are you today? Last week I had the joy and privilege of spending some time with a group of women who are in business for themselves and um, just really listening into their stories and reflecting on their journeys and um, I'm just filled with a great deal of admiration to think of uh, women who have multiple responsibilities juggling businesses in some very challenging economic climates and the thing about us women is we're not just thinking about uh, those issues with regards to our business we're also thinking about how it's impacting our families and not just our immediate families, but our extended families and our friends and our friends' families. We think lots and lots and lots about these things, which led me to um, look for a particular podcast on failures. I thought, you know, these days, have you noticed everybody is telling you about their successes and how you can imitate them and how they, how you can become a success. But very few people that I know have whole podcasts or episodes just uh, dedicated to telling you about the failures and the mistakes and even the detours that they've had in their journey, which led me to a podcast on the Kiki K story. Kiki K, do you know that store? Yellow, just think yellow uh, storefront, pretty stationary and um, that's the Kiki K. Now you still probably see their stores, but it is no longer owned by the founder. I cannot remember her name, but it's the initials are K and K. I probably have her book here. Let me just tell me. Anyways, um, some time ago when I walked into a Kiki K store, I actually started to notice that there was a change in some of the merchandise that were, was being put through. And um, I actually purchased a set of uh, the things, stationary books, that reflected exactly that change because I was quite intrigued by it. I like stories. I like particularly like stories of businesses and because they all have human beings behind it. And I bought that set thinking to myself, oh, I'll need to go and reflect on what am I seeing as being the difference. But I think instinctively what I saw, and it, this was just before the pandemic, so this would have been sort of 2018, I think. What I had noticed was that previously when you walk into a Kiki K store, you generally see beautiful stationery, a little bit like inspo type things, um, a little bit of, you know, a, a smattering of things that um, help with productivity. But in my mind, a lot of the products were aimed at sort of your early 20s, um, late teen crowd. But what I started to notice was um, a kind of like an echo of a voice in my own head. Some of the products that were coming out were really related more towards kind of like a midlife type crisis, you know, and um, trying to figure out your path, your meaning, your why, your purpose, and recast it into a tone of a dream and things like that. And I thought, oh, this is quite interesting. Um, I'll just think about this another time. Now, through the pandemic, I got news that Kiki K actually um, went into administration and was, um, you know, in dire straits. And this was interesting. I started to look up, you know, what could be the reason. And, well, it is very true. Um, when the pandemic hit, nobody was going to pretty stores anymore looking for pretty stationery. In fact, some of the bigger players like Office Work, um, Office Works, Big W, Kmart, if you now go and have a look at their store, and their online capability, you will see they've also got very pretty things up there now, um, all kinds of nice stationery. So, you know, I would think that a store like a Kiki K just possibly didn't keep up. However, I did discover the podcast. And if I remember, I will put it into the link, uh, into the comments here, because you might want to have a listen to it yourself. And the story of Kiki K is that the founder relinquished control of the business during those turbulent times and is now under new management. And she's actually had to come up with uh, a new dream and a new story. And just listening to how painful that is to her, uh, it was to her. One of the interesting moments in the podcast, it was right towards the end. You know, I think the founder, I think her name is Christina Carlson. I could be wrong. Let's just call her KK for now. The founder KK, all throughout the podcast, I thought was 
putting up an authentic front, but re- positioning her whole story for the podcast as the, her new company, um, which basically takes the tail end of her product development journey, which is about, you know, designing your life and designing your dream and, and envisioning a future and using journaling and stationery to help you to clarify that. I uh, took the tail end of her product development and started a new business. And for the most part, the podcast authentically told the story and at the same time was repos- was positioning for, and here's where I'm going and here's what I'm doing and here's the new story. And, you know, none of this would have happened if that big detour didn't take place. But at one point in her podcast, she actually says the failure, my failure with Kiki came I'm like, oh, interesting. This is not quite the message you were saying previously. And I, you know, I, psychologists would call this, it's a little bit of a Freudian slip there. <laughs> What's still possibly unprocessed and lurking in, the, in, in her dynamics is a sense that she failed. And good on the podcast interviewer, she picked it up and she said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You, you said failure. I, I don't see it as a failure at all. And, you know, and this podcast interviewer retells the story of the Kiki K brand and story and not so much what that had been achieved, but that the ending of Kiki K in and of itself was, you know, whether you want to call it a success, but it was a necessary ending. There are going to be necessary endings. I myself today sit here grieving an unne- uh, unnecessary ending. Well, I think it is a necessary ending, uh, a necessary ending, which actually just came um, out of the blue for me. But this is not the first time I've been here and I'm specifically wearing my, ooh, can you see that? My set sail badge there to remind myself that very often life all the time is full of detours and dead ends and delays and distractions. If we hold the assumption that we fail because the straight path is not working or we're not sticking to a set path, uh, we're really going to set ourselves up for not just disappointment, but a kind of condemnation, believing that that's failure. But if you actually look at um, the writings of the grit movement, you will see that the embracing multiple pathways, detours, declines, and sometimes necessary endings is really just part of a process and journey. Uh, Two of the most profound moments that I myself have had in my life, one was, I called it a season of free falling, when a huge dream just disappeared because I thought I was going to be a a mum again. I had resigned from, uh, from my job. I, you know, just had nothing in front of me because I was prepared to be full time as a mum and I lost that pregnancy. Uh, That period after that, I called it free falling. It was just, you know what? there is a lot more to discover than just that one path. And literally I saw that as a 25 year path, right? Like once I have a kid, it's like feeding, no sleep, changing nappies, um, playing Play-Doh, no sleep, no sleep, no sleep, (laughs) no sleep, even for 25 years. And that was this straight path that I would be heading down And the profound condemnation that I gave myself losing a pregnancy and not um, having a straight path in front of me and not knowing where the next path would be really broke me down. And and hence the beginning of the burnout prevention movement, um, which often has grief and loss um, and all kinds of vulnerabilities and scarring that comes with that process because the very reason why we burn out is very usually, one, because of how we do work and the work system and also the stuff that we bring into it. So this is a little um, encouragement for you. If you've started your Monday and you're looking ahead and the path doesn't look straight for whatever reasons, uh, 
what we know from the research about grit is the la that the path it was never meant to be straight. It's okay to not know where, where the next path is, where the next direction is. Sometimes it's okay to just set sail, um, do the best thing, do the next best right thing for today. Thank you to uh, Frozen 2 or 3 or 500 for that little line. Do the next best thing, do the next right thing and release the uncertainty of the rest of the steps because a lot of it we just have to set sail and see where it takes us.